Hi again, Kenneth Scott Latourette in A History of Christianity, page 205 in the chapter Admission, Worship, and Discipline in the Community. This section is entitled Christian Festivals and the Beginning of the Christian Year. Either from the beginning or from near the beginning, Christians held some days and seasons as sacred. A few of these were taken over from the Jews, such as the observance of one day in seven for special worship and, and Pentecost. Several other Jewish feasts were completely disregarded, such as the Day of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles. Because of its association with the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ, connected as they were with it, the Passover became central in the Christian calendar, although with a quite altered connotation. Easter, the day of rejoicing, was preceded by a fast. The pre-Easter fast varied in duration. In some sections, in the second century, it was for only one or two days, although in others it was prolonged to several days. In the third century, the church in Alexandria fasted for the week preceding Easter. Montanus had a pre-Easter fast of two weeks. In the fourth century, the 40 days before Easter, Quadra Gesima, though it might be six weeks, became common as a period of special observance. But for many, the fast was only for Holy Week, and for others, possibly three weeks. We also read of Quadra Gesima being kept distinct from Holy Week, separating its fast from the fast of the latter. In Antioch and much of the East, the addition of Holy Week to Quadra Gesima made a fast of seven weeks. In some places, Sunday and in others, Saturdays and Sundays were exempted from the Lenten fasting. The observance of the Sunday before Easter, commemorating the triumphal entry of Jesus to Jerusalem, seems to have begun at Jerusalem at least as early as the fourth century and to have spread gradually from there. Monday Thursday, the Thursday before Easter, was observed as the anniversary of the institution of the Lord's Supper. And in North Africa, late in the 4th century, the Eucharist was celebrated on the evening of that day, rather than in the morning, which, as we have seen, had become customary. Good Friday, quite naturally, was carefully observed, although in varying manner. The light, lighting of the Paschal or Easter candle became common in some sections before the end of the 5th century and the formal blessing of the candle was fairly general as a pre-Easter custom. By the end of the 4th century, two other festivals had become widespread. The Epiphany, originating in the East, and the 25th of December, radiating from the West. The Epiphany, at first celebrated on the 6th and 10th of January, but eventually only on the former date, commemorated the birth of Jesus, the adoration of Jesus by the wise men, and the baptism of Jesus. Christmas, the observance of the 25th of December as the birthday of Christ, appears to have begun at Rome. The New Testament, it is scarcely necessary to say, go, gives no clue as to the precise days of any of these events, but they were obviously of importance to Christians, and Epiphany and Christmas, although fixed conventionally, became outstanding. The festival of the presentation of Christ in the temple, or the purification of the Virgin, was observed in Jerusalem as early as the 4th century. That of the Holy Cross, commemorating the alleged discovery of the cross on which Jesus was suspended, and the dedication of churches in Jerusalem, erected by Constantine, began at Jerusalem and gradually spread. There were also feasts in honor of the apostles and others who were revered as saints one for the Maccabees, and at least as early as the 6th century, one for the angel Michael. In different places, various days were observed in memory of local martyrs. Some of the great Episcopal sees had special periods of fasting which did not gain universal acceptance. The manner of public prayer developed or took over certain forms. The custom of, or early arose of facing the East in prayer, in public prayer, one attitude was that of standing with arms outstretched or upraised. Another was lying prone, face downwards. To Tertullian's disgust, some sat down after a prayer had been completed. Tertullian declared that fasting or kneeling in worship on the Lord's Day and between Easter and Whit Sunday, that is Pentecost, was 
improper. So it's evident there was great variety in the early church in the matter of calendar and even forms of prayer. Next time, Psalms, Hymns, and Music. I'll put in a link to why do JWs, that is Jehovah's Witnesses, not notice that Christ and the Apostles kept the Jewish calendar, according to the Book of Acts. See you soon.